to you and me to be your gaming and esports hot topics, hot tweets, and the spiciest beans. I'm Marissa Roberto. And I'm Sir Scoots. I'm yes. joining this week, special guest, if you will. You are my special guest. And uh, first time here, but I know how the show works. I'll explain it all to you guys. If you're mm -hmm. not familiar, basically mm -hmm. we're going to talk about all sorts of esports and gaming topics. Exactly. We've got a mute button right here. Mm -hmm. If I don't like what you're saying, if you don't like what I'm saying, we can mute each other. But walk me through a little bit more specifics of that. For 30 seconds. You can only hit it one time. 30 seconds, you can shut me up if I'm saying something that you don't like. But I mean, I'm always saying amazing things, so why would you shut me up? Remember, we like it shout when you call us out when we're wrong and praise us when we're spitting truth. So let's get to it, shall we? We're going to kick off Unmuted with a story about a father pushing his son to become an esports pro. The Boston Globe published a story about a father who has taken a 16-year-old out of school in order to practice his Fortnite skills. Jordan Herzog, who goes by Crims, qualified for the Fortnite World Cup in May. His father, David, pushed him to train 18 to 14 hours a day in Fortnite and limits other activities so he can focus on the game. David said he recognized esports were on the rise and is supporting his son's dream. Scott, uh, I mean, the way this sounds is almost like it's daddy's dream and he's pushing his son into it, but that's just pure speculation. I'm not sure how I feel about a son being pulled out of school at 16. I agree. You know, yeah. you, you do hear the, the standard stay and always stay in school, right? Yeah. And we have these conversations when it comes to athletes leaving high school early to go to college yeah. or going straight to pros. And it's always that pro and con of it, right? Mm -hmm. What are you going to leave behind uh, education-wise, yeah. experience-wise, if you go do this new thing? I think it's, on the other side of the coin, it's really cool that dad is supportive of his son being a gamer and being a good gamer and esports yeah. and all that. And he's, he's drinking that same kind of Kool-Aid his kid's into. Mm -hmm. And obviously, Fortnite's a huge game. But uh, pulling him out of school just for the World Cup, um, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I, again, that's a tough one. It is speculation. Yeah. Like, does, is he going to be homeschooled instead? How yeah. is he getting his education? Um, is this just for the semester? For, right. Because, you know, then we have the event. Exactly. Is this just a one-off situation for this kid? I don't know. Like, I would love to think that... Um, I would love to think that this is a one-off and that is just something that maybe we're going to try really hard because he's proving to his son that if you work really hard at something, you can actually achieve it. And maybe this is the way to do it. And maybe in a way that's teaching life lessons too, right? It's unfortunate to be missing out on education that he could be getting. Um, but if it's just like, you know what, summer's starting, I'm going to take you out now and you're going to train and we're going to do this, we're going to do it right, that's totally fine. And I love that, parents, I love that parents support their kids um, when it comes to video games, absolutely. But this also could be one of the situations where you're seeing so many kids getting picked up by like FaZe Clan for example and they're really young and like parents are supporting it because oh my god it's FaZe Clan or oh my god it's an org that can be seen and that can give them money but they have no longevity there because well I mean it's an org and if you're not making money for them they'll just boot you out anyway. You don't know it's a scary world out there and kids need an education to actually ready them up for it. Yeah I mean what it, what's hot right now in esports might not be hot in two years exactly. so um, the fact is Fortnite it is the hot ticket right now but mm -hmm. again where will that be uh, you know in two years from now is it worth the risk. Uh, but, Who you know, knows? It's a gamble. It's a gamble that dad's taking. It's a gamble the kid's taking, and we'll see if it pays off for them. I wish them the best of luck, yep. but we, we don't know. Yeah, no doubt. Now, speaking of Fortnite, mm. Epic Games released a new update, of course, mm. that adds a powerful new weapon to the game. It's called Airstrike. It's a grenade, basically, that you throw up in the air over your enemies. It drops down an airstrike right on top of them. Always innovating, always keeping their game fresh and exciting. Nothing yes. wrong with adding new toys and new weapons. The issue is they've added it several weeks before the Fortnite World Cup. Oh my God. Several. You're being generous, Scott. It is actually only two weeks before the World Cup, which is crazy. But I feel like this is a story that is as old as time. Fortnite, like Epic, does this. They release something new before a big tournament, and all the players come to Twitter and they just completely trash Fortnite. But it's like, yo, you're trashing this game that's giving you so much love and so much attention. Can you really trash it? Like, maybe this is just something they do to stir the pot so people start talking about the World Cup a little bit more, and maybe it gets more eyeballs. Maybe they're doing this on purpose. Yeah, it, it seems to be there's a pattern here, right? Yeah. When when they're when they're ramping into something big event-wise, they'll they'll add some big craziness to the game. Mm. It, it, we've seen it before with the planes and everything else. Yeah. So I tend to think this is actually just part of their marketing strategy. Yeah. They they have decided to forego the idea of pure competitive integrity mm. or or the time for a set of players to to learn a new thing. Yes. Um, 
and they're just going for it because again this will add to the momentum going into world cup now is it if as a pure esports guy you know you want these players to have as much time as possible with whatever element you add you want to make sure it's not a random element it's, it adds to the skill set sure. involved not the randomness of it sure but as a pure esports guy as you say because you truly are Sir Scoots, you truly are. Does, I mean, especially coming from the CS world, I mean, CS guys tend to poo poo Fortnite. I feel like anybody that's a pure esports guy usually doesn't take Fortnite too seriously. But are you looking at this and taking it as a serious esport? I think Battle Royales in general um, have a place as an eSport mm -hmm. genre, if you will. Um, Fortnite is obviously the most popular one. Uh, I think there's a lot more randomness and weirdness to it in the sense of the building aspect. Yeah. You know, it's not a pure shooter. Um, it's got a lot of different elements, which, again, which is what has made it so popular, right? There's no sure. doubt about it. Yeah. Um, but I think w w some of us, you know, maybe the Counter-Strike side, et cetera, we, you know, our idea is take anything random and minimize it as much as possible. <laughs> like the only thing random in Counter-Strike is where your character spawns right, yeah. in, in, in the C tier, and even that's within right. like a few things. Or like so, sometimes chickens pop out. Yeah, there's, but, there's yeah. the chickens. There are chickens. <laughs> there are chickens. But we love uh, the chickens. Oh yeah, fair enough. Okay, moving on. Last month, speaking of CS, Blast Pro Series abruptly changed the venue for its upcoming Los Angeles tournament. It offered refunds to everyone who bought tickets and gave them priority access to the new smaller venue. The thing is, the tickets are now twice the cost they used to be. In an interview, Blast director of product and experience said that the move was an upgrade for fans who will be closer to players and talent, as well as having more amenities. So. This is the S. What do you think of this reasoning? Like, how do you, how would you feel if you were a fan attending and got their ticket taken away, but then giving them access to the new ones, but had to pay more? Um, I would not be happy. Mm. And their fans weren't happy. The no. people that bought the tickets weren't happy. Um, if you had bought a ticket um, in advance at the Galen Center, they have worked out a deal with those existing people to mm. keep it cheap for them. Mm. But obviously, the new ticket oh, price is way more expensive. Um, they moved to a different venue because their lack of ticket sales at Galen. Galen's a big it's huge. arena, right? It's um, huge. And I think I think where Blast is is kind of caught themselves. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of drama surrounding Blast. We so won't much. we won't get into all of it. Mm. But I think when it comes to their North American events, um, I think they've misinterpreted uh, our esports audiences mm. um, and ticket sales versus what they've experienced in Europe and Latin America. Absolutely. Right? And they thought they could roll into Miami and just everybody would show up. It's a big city, right? Yeah. They thought they'd roll into LA. Everyone would show up. All the teams are there. Big city, right? Ticket sales weren't good. So does this mean then for Blast, like in your mind's eye, how do you feel about Blast maybe doing more events than in NA? I feel like this might be a one and done for them. They might not come back to do more in North America. I, I think there is obviously uh, a an, 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 a use and an ability for, to have events in North America, ESL throws them right, sure. but I think you have to activate your local demographic much differently mm. in Miami, in LA, in any of our cities mm. than you would in Copenhagen, or you would in Cologne, um, or anywhere in Latin America where they go, because it's, it's a different kind of fever pitch for esports. So, so you can't you can't fire up a month before the event and try to sell tickets. You need to embed months in advance, start doing lots of local activations to sell those things. That's fair. It just seems odd because Blast in and of itself, I feel like from the outside looking in, are so well put together, so well produced. They seem to have a really great crew there doing what they need to do and a lot of money behind it as well. So you would think that they would have had the, the foresight, especially with all the talent that they've got in their arsenal as well, the foresight mm -hmm. to just plan ahead and make sure this is exactly what it needs to be for NA because a lot of the talent is, in fact, from NA. Yeah, and I, I think... I think a lot of it can be, again, a lot of, a lot of issues around uh, Blast themselves and Astralis and all that, but I think mm. generally what, you, what we've seen happen is they threw a couple good events last year, mm. got great feedback, people liked that it was different, um, they got good reception at the local events, again, crowd-wise, and they just went, well, we'll just do it yeah. even yeah. more so, and mm. they, didn't, they didn't think enough, I think, about the ramifications of A, expanding to more events with the same format, and cities being very different in how you have to approach them. Okay, okay fair enough. Fair enough. So our last story, uh, NBA 2K League pros are criticizing Ninja over his so-called lame response to an ESPN poll. Ninja was up against 2K League pro O'Larry 2K. Great story with this guy. Mm -hmm. In ESPN's best esports moment of 2018 poll, Larry's a pro who came back to play in the 2K League after being wounded in the Madden shooting that happened in August. When Ninja found out who he's up against in this kind of poll, he basically told his fans to just vote. Mm -hmm. NBA 2K fans are upset with Ninja that he didn't really say vote for Larry, didn't like nod to this, this very heartwarming story. What do you yeah. think about this? 
I mean, it's odd. I just feel like because Ninja is who he is now, everyone is going to take everything he says and just kind of try to poo-poo it in some way. I mean, yes, he should have. I, I guess he should have said, hey, vote for Larry. He didn't. He didn't say vote for me, I wanna beat Larry, he just said vote. But because of his millions of followers, I guess the interpretation would be, hey, vote for me anyway. Yeah, I don't understand, I don't even understand this poll to begin with, if we can just like back it up even further. <laughs> yeah, can we? I think it's, I, I'm sorry, but this comparison to like best esports moment, to have Larry and then go up against Ninja and Marshmallow, I'm sorry, but like those two don't equate at all. Like those two aren't even on the same freaking level. Why are they even up against each other? It doesn't make any sense. Agreed. Uh, and a lot of us have, have had a problem with this poll from the get-go, yeah. right? No, uh, great ESPN is into esports and mm -hmm. they're excited about doing stuff. It's a popularity poll and the, the clips and the moments they've chosen as to be in the voting, some yeah. of us just scratch our heads and go, that's not esports. Right. That is pro-am show matches. That is, uh, like, it's just a weird, yeah. it's a weird I poll, agree. right? I agree, but I feel like with these polls, I mean, a lot of them that ESPN has done, yes, but even other, you know, companies or, or people that talk about esports, they use the polling as a way to just get clicks, to yep. get people to click on it, to get people involved, so they can show the people that have invested in their company, like, look how many clicks we get, look how many likes we get, look how many retweets we get. So they tag the biggest person they could possibly think of. So obviously they're gonna say Ninja because Ninja will retweet it and Ninja will get, you know, if he gets votes, that's great, but it doesn't matter because he retweeted it and all of his fans who are so yeah. active on social will like it and retweet it as well. So I feel like that's why he was included here. I think there could have been maybe a better moment. There there have been so many even great CS moments that have happened over the past year too. I just feel like I, I, the way that they went about this poll just seemed a little sus. So yeah. seems a little sus. Totally agree with you on that. And again, when you, anytime you do a popularity contest, whether it's for the Hall of Fames that we have or this kind of thing, yeah. it's just, if you don't do it with a panel of experts that can kind of curate mm. the choices, yeah. it, again, just the, 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 the most popular person will win. A popularity contest, okay, and if it were, you should vote for me. <laughs> JK, all right, it's time to check in with Cliff. <laughs> he just muted me. Uh, her first time comes from Mascara, who is playing some team fight tactics, and let's just say he did the math. Build is fully online. So technically I've seen the math. It's supposed to do 1667 damage. So someone in chat says, wasn't it better to take spatula? Let me let me show you. Let, so I positioned it perfectly against this comp. Let me show you. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I guess the damage that was done was only one off of what he had said. But I first, like, first of all, shout out to Skara. I love that Skara is like yeah. just getting clipped here because he hasn't been clipped in a minute and clip it. And I feel like, I don't know, he used to be this like amazing voice for like League of Legends and see all this stuff. And now that he's jumping on the tactics scene, I mean, it makes sense because so many views now are going to tactics for League of Legends, which is great. Still an odd RNG type game yeah, to sure. be watching. But I, you gotta love Skara though. How, how, do you know Skara? Have you met Skara before? I've not met him, but I, I mean, I obviously know of him. Yeah, yeah. Um, I might have met him at, at an event like, very, very briefly. For sure, you but get around. I have no real rapport with him, though, that's for <laughs> sure. No, I think it's awesome. Again, he called it like almost to the to the like minute. Like that. He's um, got his math. Yeah. Like that. Maybe. And our... normally you're not supposed to do math on air. It's a very oh. bad thing to do as someone on air doing math. Oh so my gosh, it's so true. It. Wait, I was just watching CSGO this weekend in yeah. ESL. How who? Sato was, yeah, Sato was just doing math. He's like, uh, God. He just tweeted it. He's like, I should not have done that. Like, don't do math on live broadcast. It's just a bad scene for everyone involved. Yeah. Yeah, never do math on air. It's, <laughs> it always fair, turns out bad. Fair enough. Who do we got next? N n n the one, the only. He's uh, back. Oh. Dr. Disrespect <laughs> has made his return to Twitch, so we have to take a look at what changes he's made to his crazy mm. high production stream. Let's take a peek at that. <laughs> Today's going to be one hell of a show. And what I mean by show, no filming. Take a look. Okay? <laughs> Careful. Huh? Well, yeah. Uh, I mean, here's the thing. He's go he's a memer. Yeah. He he's going to meme. He's a professional memer. He gets it. The fact that I mean, he did record in a bathroom, <laughs> and now he's in like a locker room. Like, oh, no recording. Yeah. I like. I love it. You, you. The thing is, like, you love to hate. You, you love to hate on the character that he's created for himself, really. So, yeah. I mean, can can we really though? Because this is this is entertainment. No, I think this is great. And again, I would say his production value has always been crazy with oh, the yeah. green screen stuff he does. And and again, to be self-effacing and kind of mm. mock yourself and for the trouble you got into, that's how you own it, right? That's how you take it away from everybody else who wants to poop all over you yeah. and you just do it yourself. Right? Uh, I, he wanted to make, he I guess he submitted 
an emote to Twitch, with something to do with him in the bathroom. I don't know if it was him in a stall or something. Oh. And they said no to it. Oh, right? I'm surprised. Yeah, so, but, it's, but again, he's just trying to like, you know, a little different than his last drama. Yes. So much easier to make fun of yourself and have a good time with it. Obviously, his last drama was a little personal, a little real. Definitely um, personal. And this was a mistake, what? right? What he did was a mistake at yeah. E3. It wasn't like he intentionally was going to mess with people in bathrooms, yeah. knowing that he was maybe, you know, breaking rules. I guess. So, I mean, I so don't not know. Good. I don't, don't get me wrong. Yeah, I don't know if it was a mistake. He, he went along with what his director said, but it could have been his idea, too. We don't He's really know, He's the director right? of everything. Come on, the doctor runs everything over Yeah, there. exactly. Thanks for lying, though. Okay, it's really <laughs> the best time of day when we scroll through the Twitterverse to bring you all the things a pro is blessed with from their timeline. I especially love it when a pro is sitting right next to me and I can make pro. him explain his tweet. Yes, you are. But I'm not a pro, though. Okay. You're a pro in the scene, Scott. Okay, okay. Okay? She's pointing it, at me right it's, now. She's all encompassing. It's all encompassing. Look at that. Good I'm on the big screen, Yes. I made it. CS fans, be thankful we have many TOs who try many things at their events. After all, our game could be locked down by the dev and franchise to put into one flavor fits all box. Hmm. Mm. So, uh, explain your tweet, Scott. Yeah, it's really simple. It came out right after um, ESL Cologne did their opening um, and they had a musical act. And musical acts are a hit or miss in, in competitive gaming esports events. Sometimes they work out. Last year they had an orchestra, which was amazing for their opening. This time they had a, a couple different artists and it didn't go over as well. Um, some yeah. people in the building said it was great. People are watching at home. Audio is always different, sounds different. Wasn't, wasn't well received. So obviously the Twitterverse blew up, Reddit blew up. Yeah. And, uh, and, and get, DJ Khaled blew up. Yeah, and that's my and that's my tweet to that. It's basically like, look, like they're gonna keep trying stuff. Like, again, yeah. you could talk about Blast and them trying stuff. Everyone always tries different stuff. Not always gonna work, but I would rather have these TOs existing and doing this kind mm. of wacky stuff mm. to see what works, and what we like. Then again, Valve locking our game into one box and 20 yeah. teams rule the world and everybody else gets to watch. Right. Fair enough. So uh, I guess you're boosting Riot at this point because my God, was that KDA performance ever popping? I was really into that. Oh God, it's so tight. I love that song so much. All right, uh, <laughs> it's fine. Moving That's on. What, what's the next? What's the next tweet? No, don't mute me. Uh, what is the next? Oh, the next tweet's on me. Yeah. I'm not about to, I'm not gonna read my own tweet, okay, right? Fine. So that's why we switched this up. Okay, fine. Um, so you've given me one to talk about, and yes. this one's Richard Lewis's mm. tweet. So what Richard tweeted was, again, also based on Cologne, basically. Mm. ESL Cologne has been, has really been everything I'd hoped it would be and more. Yes, F yes, all yes. the greedy assholes who have deprived, oh, I can say assholes though, okay. Yeah, yeah. Who have deprived, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Who have deprived, of, uh, deprived us for the rest, from the, this for the rest of the year. This is what Counter-Strike should be and why it's the greatest eSport of all time. Hmm, tea sip a little bit here. Hmm. <laughs> who, who are the greedy a-holes he's, he's talking about, Scott? I think, I think Richard is alluding to kind of the blast drama mm. of uh, the idea that, the, that their new set of events has uh, created a soft exclusivity with some of these top teams that have signed up to go to five of the events. Sure. And when they go to a blast event, they might cancel one of the, and not go to one of these other big events mm. that we are traditionally more looking at as our big events, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so Richard's alluding to the fact that it, like, it, it kind of, it's nice to see everybody in one building all sure. competing properly and not spread out or not saying no because they're taking this one, this invite for this reason or mm. this invite for another reason. Okay, right? fair enough. I think that's basically the, the, the gist of it. All right, I was hoping for a little more tea sipping, but that's fine. We can move on. Our last <laughs> round of that comes from, well, looky here. It's Mr. Scott Smith. Wait, another tweet? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Some of the esports press oh, okay. is just laughable at this point. <laughs> Ooh, who are you talking about, Willis? Yeah, I mean, uh, this one is aimed at ESPN. I'll, I'll be honest, I'm not gonna lie. Okay. Um, although I think a lot of people call themselves esports press and esports journalists, and it's like, no, you're a blogger, you don't even know what you're doing, you don't know how to write. Like, Richard always pulls these guys out. Yeah, the, yeah the, I'm, wait, what wait, the hell wait, is how, this? How Where do, is this how place? How do you feel about yeah. me? I mean, okay. you're not bad. Oh, I mean, thanks. You've got a sports background a little bit, right? You do some <laughs> stuff on sports, I think, so that helps. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna mute me? <laughs> you mute me. So, I... I and the reason I tweeted this that day was like I was watching ESPN Esports' Twitter feed. Okay. And about every 20 minutes, it was something about the homestand that Overwatch was happening in the league, mm. or Arda having to eat hot dogs because he lost a competition. Yes. And, and again, they're, they're partners of the Overwatch League, right? They're partners with League of Legends. So I understand why they do so much content around that. Sure. But meanwhile, hours of these tweets mm. and not a single tweet until actually I tweeted them, mm. and certainly no story on their website mm. about 
ESL Cologne happening, mm. about Team Liquid's run, about yeah. winning a Grand Slam, four events in a row, $1 million on top mm. of the prize purse of Cologne. Mm. Like, and again, I'm a Counter-Strike guy, so yeah. I, get, I, I, don't, I know they're not going to embrace our game like they embrace League of Legends and Overwatch because it's a very different game. They are owned by some people that are a little concerned about the, you know, the, the world of Counter-Strike. For right? sure. Like you are talking about, obviously, the fact that they're terrorists in the game. We say terrorists win sometimes in the game. Obviously, when the terrorists win, there's a bomb that's being planted. So it is a little scary for broadcasters, especially when they're partnering with these different esports or publishers, to then talk about those games because it doesn't really work well with their... They also have to sell to advertisers, yeah. right? So it's just difficult for them to do. But you're right. They should have... They should have said something just about ESL Cologne. Just one tweet. A tweet. I'm not saying that they should be at Cologne and have a have a, a desk like they do at the other events. And right. they, they make tons of great content out of those events. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that partnership. But like you're ESPN, you're supposed to be the market leader of sports, and mm. now East, you're bringing this world to esports. So give some love to the other stuff. I, I yeah. remember I had a conversation a year or two ago with them and about like the links on their website. And yes. League of Legends has a link, and Overwatch has a link, mm -hmm. and that's it. And then everything else just kind of falls into the esports category. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, why no Counter Strike? And they, right. and they kind of explain the politicalness of it and why they can't. And I, sure. I totally get that. But there's nothing wrong and politically damaging yeah. to tweet, congratulations, Team Liquid, for your amazing victory, blah, Fair blah, 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 blah. And you know what's called? Kudos to you because you tweeted that and then they did it. So that's the power that you have, friend. Now take us home. Bring us to crowd control. Take your power. Uh, crowd control. So let's move on because it's time <laughs> to get some crowd control. Yeah. Let's start it off with the tryhard of all tryhards. Mm. This man goes ham on Pokemon Go in Taiwan. <laughs> oh, okay. This all right, guy. yeah, this guy has a, a day job, I guess, of some kind. <laughs> He's a priest at a temple. So his phones are all sponsored by Asus. He's been interviewed before. He just really likes the game and uh, doesn't sell accounts or anything. Like, isn't that... Isn't that amazing? It's hardcore. That's the most hardcore I've ever freaking seen. <laughs> He's got a bike and it's just, like, it's just phones. Full on. I just can't even imagine like how many phones is too many phones. Like, okay, I've seen people on the streets of Toronto because there are a lot of Pokemon goers out there. I've seen them out there with three phones. I think that's the most I've mm. seen. They've got like a backpack with whatever juice they need for their phones, the data that's being consumed, all that stuff. But I can't even imagine the amount of data that would be needed yeah. to play that game on the on the go. Pokemon on the go. go. I, and, yeah, exactly, and I just can't, like, I am I love that people still play this game. I'm surprised that it's at, still at this level, the most hardcore of hardcore. Like, you, I don't get are it. Are you multi-phoning Clash of Clans, though? I heard you are. <gasps> okay, first of all, it's Clash Royale. Oh, Clash Royale. Okay, oh, like, yes. let's be real. Clash of Clans is dead. Are they different? Oh, dead. are they not the same game? All right, okay, so... <laughs> Sometimes you find people who have somehow avoided <laughs> pop culture by living under a rock longer than Patrick, like this journalist. Okay, the caption of the photo says, a dinosaur in bondage gear. What? <laughs> what? Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, so technically I guess he's not wrong, but like who hasn't heard of Bowser? Even if you don't play video games, how do you not know that that's Bowser? Yeah. I it mean, he's just a standard, you know, but, not quite as a Mario Luigi if you're an unknown, but Bowser's Bowser. Bowser right? is like the number one known villain yeah. in video games. How does this even happen at all? And also, like, I don't get this, this journalist stuff either where, like, you have editors, so you're going to put this out there and, and nobody catches it? Nobody catches it to call you out and say, like, hey, like, this is wrong. Unless he's just trying to meme. It, this could be a meme -y situation. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. You, you don't believe it. Uh, yeah, I, I just sounds like, <laughs> I sounds really like bad reporting. So, yeah. <laughs> bad, bad, bad intel. Fair bad, enough, fair enough. So finally, Reddit user SecretBox89 has given us an award that needs to be handled out, handed out at every tournament. Whoa, what is this one? What? Oh, the Salty <laughs> Award. Yo. <laughs> I can't, uh, you know, Scott, like, I don't even know who I would give out this kind of award to. Like, I feel like a lot of it should go, like, in the FGC, this would work. This really would work. Hmm. Uh, anything 1v1. But if you could hand out a salty award to someone in Counter-Strike, who would it go to? Put you on the spot right Ooh, now. Ooh, boy. Yeah, that's not even in the script. Salty award. Salty award. <laughs> to Sir Scoots himself. I don't. I'd have to. I don't know. You put me on the spot. The salty award for Counter Strike. Hmm. Would it be? Would it be Thorin? 
I wouldn't call Sar Thor Thorne a salty, though. He's just very critical. Okay. But he's not okay. necessarily angry and salty all the time, okay. you know? Okay, so. Salty, salty. So, I mean, if we're going to do uh, Fortnite, I guess we should give it to Ninja, because sometimes he gets a little salty about the game, too. Or any any Ninja, any Fortnite fans, really, that play the Fortnite as an eSport, uh, I feel like they get very salty. I feel like yeah. they should all, they all get salty awards. Um, I wouldn't give one to you, though, because you're sweet as cherry pie. Aww. Nice. You lie so well. You Canadians lie very, very well. Um, I would uh, say though, the uh, yeah. the, the, the pros of Fortnite would get the salty award this week because of 100. their response to the the, the ad, the grenade. Right oh here. my gosh, so completely. Yes, absolutely. Listen, Scott, thank you so much for joining me today. This has been such a pleasure hanging out with you and debating. We didn't fight though. I hope it's we didn't okay. fight. No, we didn't. You fight. did. You crushed. Listen, that's it for our meter. Remember, you can always hit us up on all our socials. Just say hi and send us some stuff to react to. We are Squad State everywhere, and we'll see you next time.